what is your current position on sanctions against Burma and on investing in Burma? Thank you. Uh, we have brought out a statement on sanctions, making it quite clear that as far as we have been able to find out, the economic sanctions have not really hurt the people of Burma much. But it seems to be hurting the regime to the extent that they wish the sanctions to be removed as soon as possible. So we have to accept the fact that sanctions are mainly political weapons, although they do have economic consequences. And uh, we have to try to achieve these political goals that will make it quite unnecessary for any country in this world to impose sanctions on Burma. That you're keen to promote foreign investment into your country. The question I have is what if that foreign investment, the foreign investor has to partner with some of the businessmen on the so-called blacklist? Thank you. Well, there are other ways of investing in Burma, I hope. I know that it is very <coughs> difficult to avoid those uh, businesses which are connected to the government because it's those who have contacts with the government who get the best opportunities. But we would like the business world to investigate the possibility of linking up with other businesses in Burma who are free of government control and who do not fall into the chronic category because I'm sure you can do it if you really work hard enough at it unless we can create at the same time as political freedoms economic freedoms in Burma we are not going to be able to really achieve democracy in the past 23 years you have devoted all your time, your energy, your life to democracy. 23 years has already gone. Do you still think, or do you still think that the military regime will give up their power or will be willing to share their power with the people? If you do, what makes you so optimistic? If you don't, can you tell us what will be the next move? Thank you. I do not think that most military regimes are willing to give up their power and I think it is our responsibility to make them see that it is in the best interest not just of the country alone but of themselves as well to give up the kind of power that does not bring respect with it. We want our military to understand that they would be very much more respected as a professional military that does not oppress the people. Our, what we are trying is what Hong Kong University is trying to do. We are trying to educate people. I think we'll have to educate those who do not want democracy to the virtues and wisdom of democracy. You have been advocating nonviolence as a means of achieving democratic government. But regrettably, it has very little effect on the military government. Recently, we saw successes of People's Revolution in Tunisia and Egypt. To what extent do you think um, their experience can be adopted in, the in your political campaign in Burma? Thank you. We are, of course, studying the situation in the Middle East very, very carefully. We have to wait to see how things really pan out because the Egyptian and Tunisian revolutions still haven't come to a conclusion. We don't know where they are really le le leading. Now, with regard to non-violence, many people have said that, for me, non-violence is a matter of morality. It is not. It is a matter of politics, quite simply. Because in Burma, government, uh, the change in government, regime change, has been brought out through violent means over a long period and we want to put a stop to this vicious cycle. That is why we have chosen the path of non-violence. We want to put Burma into a situation where change can be brought about, political change can be brought about without violence. I was in uh, Myanmar uh, last month. I 
talk with some of the uh, colonels from the military government. And I did not see anything wrong, except I could not check the email and uh, of course go, went to uh, Facebook in the hotel. Okay, my question is very simple and maybe very straightforward. Uh, what would be the political and economical system that would be most beneficial to uh, Myanmar? First of all, I must say I envy you having been able to talk to colonels. This is something we've been trying to do for a long, long time. Uh, what is the kind of political system that would be best for Burma? I believe in an open market economy. I believe in certain economic freedoms which will allow our people to develop economically as well as politically. But this is something that cannot be worked out overnight. We all have many, many economic advisors, but sometimes their advice is not really practicable. And sometimes the best advice cannot be implemented quickly enough to suit the situation of the country. So this is something that we have to take step by step. But basically, I believe in a free market economy. My question is, um, given the recent Arab Spring movement, which has received considerable um, Western military support, uh, would you feel that the same level of external support um, is possible for Myanmar, uh, this kind of intervention is possible uh, in this situation? And, and is it something that you would personally want to see uh, for this current situation in Burma? Thank you. I quite frankly don't think that there will be any external military intervention. Uh, action with regard to Burma and uh, this is not something that we particularly want. What we want to achieve is national reconciliation through a negotiated settlement and this is what we're trying to convince the new government of that if it was something that they could not do as a military regime surely they could do this as, as an elected government even if we have to question the way in which the elections were held. This is an opportunity and we would like the present government to take this opportunity offered to them to show that we do not need violence in order to change. Intrigued by an opening remark in your speech where you says that you think uh, people should not be categorized as good or evil, wise or stupid, but as learners or non-learners. Um, I'm wondering how you would describe the military leaders who had put you under house arrest for more than 20 years and also imprisoned so many student activists. I would say they're not very fast learners. I think they're going to take, uh, we have to be very patient and I think they're going to take time learning. But uh, everything, that any of us can do to help them to be better, quicker learners would be a great boon to our country.